All right, so this tutorial is how to add camera movements using the key framer. So say you have a background that you want to pan across the screen. What you'll do is, uh, I opened up a different file of my background. And as you can see, it's about three times as wide as the screen size of my main file, the 1080p file. So if you're gonna pan something across the screen, you need to make sure that the file size is a lot bigger than the dimensions of the screen you are working with. Otherwise you'll have to zoom in to enlarge it and it might get pixelated. So on this file down here, on my animation layer, I have it set to hold so that when it goes over a few frames, when it's calculating the camera movement, it won't turn invisible. If you have it on none, then it'll just only show up for that first frame. So make sure you have it on hold. All right. So down here, this is the layer that the camera movement is going to be applied to. So the pan is going to be five seconds long. So I'll stretch this out to 120 frames at 24 frames a second. That'd be five seconds. So come up to effects go to motion, then click on key framer. Now, click on source, go to effects stack, go all the way down to project list, and see we have horizontal 5000. That's the name of the project I imported. So whichever project your background's on, click that. And now it shows up. So over here, uh, this X and Y axis, these control the direction it's going either vertically or horizontally. So since this is just a, a horizontal pan, we'll put the Y axis on lock so I don't accidentally move it up or down. So, to have it moving across the screen, we'll just drag this all the way over. See the yellow represents where it is in relation to the screen. To click this as a key frame, you can just click this key right here. And now down on the timeline, we have a key frame. So it's set on this image. Now, We'll go all the way to the end of the sequence on frame 120 and go ahead and select this as a keyframe. Move this over all the way to here. So let's just test how this will look. All right, that looks pretty good. So once you like how the camera movement looks after you select your keyframes, you'll click select all images. Then on the effects stack, come down to apply effects stack. Now let's see how this looks. So there we go, we've added a camera movement. And you can also do parallax scrolling by making another layer and then um, panning it over it at a different speed. I'll just go ahead and try it with this one just to give you an idea of what it could look like. Actually, I'll make it the background, so I'll make it bigger. So come back to source. Okay, so it's selected. Since this is the exact same project, I'm gonna go to the Z axis and make it bigger so we have some contrast. So I'll just go minus 500, see what that looks like. All right, let's see what this looks like. So now I have the back moving at a slower rate to create some parallax. Now to make a, a more effective use of, of parallax, you could add blur to the background to add some depth. You could also change the color, make it a more cool color. Okay, now I'm going to change the color a bit, make it a little 
bit different from the foreground. Also lower the contrast about 10%. And I'm going to make it a little darker. So that's how you can add camera movements to different layers. Um, you can also add rotation effects with the key framer, which is done down here. Click on angle and you can change the angle if you wanted to have something rotating around and then this angle up here changes it that way. You can change the angle right here, change it that way. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. And again, to apply a rotation effect, you just click on the keyframe and then change the angle a bit. And then it would add a rotation. It doesn't really work in the context of this scene, but there is just so much you can do this program.